I could get lost in admiration. So, <clears throat> because I thought. Yes. Between door and door, there I stand, a door, an almost ordinary door, wooden, an elongated rectangular piece of reinforced safety glass, next to a wooden fire alarm button. Wooden? No, surely not. I'll come back to that button directly. I'll come back to that door directly. And all I want is to get to the other side. I'm standing at the bottom of the metal heavy duty staircase. Beautiful, simple and brutalist engineering solution to the question of connecting five floors of the old granary. This one. No, this is it. Sorry. I could get lost in admiration. I could. I won't. Not now. Now I need to move on. Through this door to the lounge, the cafe, the breakfast room, the dining room, the computer room, the reception, the room where the information leaflets are kept, the room, the room, we all have to enter when we first arrive, the room where we register, the room where we say goodbye, the room where I want to find a chair, damn it. A table, sufficient light, the room where I want to sit and write a story. This one. The room where I am sitting now. Writing a story. Instead, I gain no entry. I have paid for my entitlement to sit in that room, be blasted with unsettled pop, be surrounded by the flowing murmur of fellow travellers. The door doesn't open. Not without a piece of white, nearly white, pre-programmed plastic. A piece of plastic where once there was a number keypad, where the correct combination of numbers in the correct order gained access or denied the forgetful and denied the ineligible. The gate that shows that I belong. I turn around. I stare at the old rough stone wall that once kept grain from rats and the elements. A beautiful stone wall, com competently erected. Can you hear the birds? Beautiful. But I have no eyes for industrial beauty. Not today. Instead, I swear. Oh, fuck. Am I allowed to say that? Oh, uh, of course I'm. I'm ri I've written it. And my exhausted mind, drained by nearly eight hours of driving, most of the length of this country, driving from South Wales to Berwick. That Berwick that has once been Scottish. That Berwick marginally south of Edinburgh. That Berwick that was English before it became Scottish before it changed masters again and repeated that process. More times than I could give a smelly dog piss drenched corner of post-industrial real estate by the docks for. I push the button, a blue light comes on. A blue light goes off and the door opens. It's the door to the lift. I have access of sorts. To get into the bottom hall, I have to go up to the fourth floor where I alight. I purposefully stride forth. A long corridor away from my temporary bedroom. Just the door to the corridor. I move the door handle downwards. It should open the door. It would at home. It would. Probably it would in the Dorchester where, where the, when the flunky is otherwise engaged. It doesn't here. I need a little almost white pre-programmed plastic card. 
I have a little off-white pre-programmed plastic card. It's behind this door and another door and a door to my bedroom. I'm trapped. There are places I could be trapped in where trapped could mean temporary heaven. I could be trapped in a French patisserie. Almost any French patisserie would do. I yet have to find one that doesn't have a few delicately composed culinary delights. And I can think of one little place in La Châtre. A small display counter of delight beyond my ability to describe. And an even smaller back room with two settees, two benches and two small tables. But all the right architectural intimacy for a delicate plate with two artisan compositions that display the masterly craft that can be produced in a kitchen. Only the French and perhaps the Austrians know how to arrange. I'm not trapped in a French patisserie. I'm trapped in a sodding staircase in the youth hostel of Barrick upon Tweet. A wonderful place. Not a staircase. Barrick. I could be trapped. Let's see where I could be trapped. Oh, yes. In a 19th century Parisian brothel where the stink and decay of the street of the chaussee is disguised strong scents that take my senses along the route my imagination has already travelled I'm not trapped in a decadent expensive Parisian brothel where Toulouse-Lautrec would be a welcome and well-paying guest I'm trapped in a stairwell in between two doors sitting on one of the steps of four flights of stairs this is not my world, and my name is not Franz Kafka. What have I missed? How did I slide into inextricable dependency? At least the destroyers of weaving machines had a genuine fight for their survival. Rationalization for, the, for them meant no work. No work meant no bread, and no bread is death by starvation. I am trapped in a stairwell with all exits controlled by today's technology. I'm not starving. I had breakfast this morning. I'm not starving, though too early for tea, biscuits, chocolate and fishermen's friends. I fooled my stomach to send the wrong message to my brain. Relax, you're not hungry. Water. Hell, water. At what point do I need to fight dehydration? There's no tap in the stairwell. Why would I be? Don't panic. But why am I shaking? It's not hunger. It's not fear. It's rage. The fire alarm button becomes an option. That would tell them. That would tell the world. And it would get me into trouble. You were frightened, sir. No, I reply. You were panicking, sir. A reluctantly whispered, no. You were enraged, sir. Well, it's like this. Well, maybe, perhaps just a little. And then this pimply youth in uniform gives his inevitable lecture. He could have waited for the next guest to come along and open the door for you. You could have knocked on the door and waved through the window to attract attention. You could have. Yes, but fading, shrinking, embarrassment. Furthermore, sir, I'm sorry to say, sir, not looking in the least sorry to say so at all, that will be £75. I have to charge you for the call-out, plus an official warning, sir. Bastard. It doesn't come to that. I don't push the button, but I'm still trapped. Trapped and sitting on the lowest step of floor two. It's called metal. My car 
will stop working if the governing computer gives up its soul. A smidgen of dust in the wrong place. My artificial social life, such as it is these days, with Facebook friends you never physically meet. go down a black hole if my computer breaks down. I'll instantly fall foul out of the loop. I'll instantly fall out of the loop. Face-to-face -face talking has fallen out of fashion. Yesterday's unread emails are this morning's missed opportunities to retrieve my crew take part in a BBC broadcast corrigal race, in a piss-up with my mates, in a missed opportunity to spice up my sex life. Damn it! I can't even order a train ticket to the Edinburgh Fringe without being connected online. Huh. The banking system crash leaves me with a trolley load of perishables. And I left shopping for vital supplies until now, relying on my ever-ready plastic cart and Sainsbury's ever-reliable restocking of shelves. The plastic cart is the other one, the one that invisibly drains my bank account, a complete failure at opening stairwell doors in North English youth hostels. My finger hovers over the button. Dull panic, Weltschmerz, Weltangst. I'm not even being targeted personally. I could be one of 7.13 billion, soon to be trillion, inhabitants of this spheroid. I could be a startled rabbit, a lost bumblebee. No one person or no evil system has pointed a finger at my chest. My morphous blob of flesh, liquids, calcium and trace ions, they are all in physical limbo and deep mental anguish. A little later, he just stands there. No, hardly standing, leaning against the wall, bent upper torso that says, couldn't care less, I'm cool, I'm in control. Just not bothered with being in control at the moment. He scrolls his iPhone, earphones on, detached from the real world, and yet, and yet, connected. Hmm. Blends in with the wall, and the door frame, but in one fluid movement, ready to blend out again, and ready to reconnect with the physical world as non virtualist mine. I press my nearly white pre-programmed plastic card, which I've retrieved, against the electronic door mechanism. It gently wears green light, the door opens. He, that teenager, he peels himself from the wall. He follows me through. He was never trapped. At least not in his head. He used me. He would have used anyone as a key to transcend. My angst, just in my head. Yeah. You know, I just need to get some tears out of my eyes. Okay. Feel as if you're a botanist looking at the bark. As if Should I stand on this? As if looking, sort of examining the bark. I don't know if you could just, just like you looking at a flock of crows. They're prickly.
Not really. Oh. Oh, I guess. Oh. Oh, no. Interesting. Can I stand down there with a 